Jacqueline Quinn, Deputy Director at DCRAC. I'm here to help you with your housing, tax, or title problem. So give me a call anytime, and I'm happy to meet to see what we can do together. My name is Joe Gross. I'm the Credit Clinic Director here at DCRAC. I'm the one that would sit down with you, develop a budget, figure out a spending plan, pull your credit report, and see if there's any way we can improve that. Hi, my name is Lillian Harrison, and I'm the Housing Director for DCRAC. And as the Housing Director, I help people with foreclosure prevention, pre-purchase counseling, credit, and budgeting. And it's absolutely my pleasure to serve you. Hi, my name is Anthony Doring. I'm Delaware's Free Tax Attorney and the Director at the DCRAC Low Income Tax Clinic. If you receive a notice from the IRS, please give me a call as soon as possible so I can schedule for a free consultation. Hi, my name is Maricela Tobar Rangel, and I am responsible for doing the intake process here at DCRAC. And I also manage the credit union, Stepping Stones Community Federal Credit Union, y también hablo español. Hi, my name is Christian Tijerino. I work for DICRA as a outreach director. I enjoy working for community and local families. Hi, my name is Howard Keener. I'm the director of Strategic Projects and Community Affairs for DCRAC. I work on human resources, internal policies and procedures, and community development, and also marketing for DCRAC. Delaware, how are you? I am Rashmi Rangan with the Delaware Community Reinvestment Action Council as well as Stepping Stones Community Federal Credit Union. I'm going to talk about many, many things. The credit union, our credit clinic, our tax clinic, and helping me talk about our housing clinic is joining me from Southern Delaware, Lillian Harrison, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> what a delight. So how was traffic coming up? Oh my goodness. Uh, a couple of times we hit some really heavy traffic, but I remembered, you know, it's uh, the end, beginning of the week and so everybody's trying to get home. So Yeah, because heavy. I wouldn't have thought coming from the beach right. up to Wilmington right. you would be hitting any traffic. Right. <laughs> Sunday's going north, that's <laughs> when you're going to hit the traffic. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Thanks for making it here. Oh, you're welcome. What we wanted to do today was mm -hmm. talk a little about uh, and put in perspective all our work. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, you've been with us now for three plus years yes. almost. How time flies when you're having yeah. fun. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. And we are having fun. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, how has it been? Uh, it's been educational, first and foremost. Um, educational in the sense of learning about uh, all of the problems that we knew existed, but understanding how they work, but also how to make changes. 
I think, and understanding and learning about the power of our voices. Mm -hmm. And I think the organization working with DCRAC has been great uh, in that education in giving voice uh, to our communities. Mm -hmm. And so uh, these three years have been really uh, life-changing, I think, is what I can say for me. I'm definitely an advocate. If I didn't know my place before, I know it now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we are usually we are on the show, I talk about all our programs, right. how we help. Right. I don't talk about the other things right. that we do. Right. And I know, looking <laughs> at your reports every month, yes. that you are one person. When I say our housing program, right. I'm speaking to our housing program. Right. right? right. So you are a one person shop and you yeah. do uh, foreclosure prevention, mm -hmm. but that's not the be all and all of right. what you do because right. somebody that comes in for foreclosure prevention right. has gazillion other issues, yes. right? Yes. So all the time. <laughs> all the time. Yes. I always say, uh, even in all of our talks, that housing, the housing issue is what brings them through the door to us. Mm -hmm. We, they get a foreclosure notice, they come to us, and uh, that's why they think they're there. But in order for us to effectively help them, we have to address what brought them to that point. Exactly. So we have mm -hmm. to look at income, we have to look at what's going on in their lives, death in the family, mm -hmm. uh, illnesses, sickness. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of that, you know, some of that we can't help with other beyond support, but in bringing about a resolution for that family and putting them in a better place, mm -hmm. we have to be able to counsel, we have to be able to coach, we have mm -hmm. to be able to refer. Mm -hmm. So it's always more than just the foreclosure prevention. Mm -hmm. And I can safely say that for pretty much all of our clients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about clients later. You talked about mm -hmm being able to be a voice yes. in yes. large decisions yes. that folk make in a vacuum out there. Yes. They have no clue mm -hmm. how people survive, right. live, mm -hmm. make ends meet, yes. keep a roof over their heads, yes. get a job. Yes, keep so, a job. <laughs> keep a job. <laughs> yes. um, so what are some ways that you bring mm -hmm. our client voices to the forefront. Mm -hmm. I, you know, uh, as representative of our, our agency and the housing agency, I think it's important for us to be where decision makers are. Mm -hmm. And so we definitely sit on uh, several boards that influence housing in our communities. Mm -hmm. And we do that so that we can bring the voice of the community to the individual decision makers. Mm -hmm. We participate in county council, we participate in legislature, we partner with other agencies such as Housing Alliance Delaware, so that we can be able to sit at the table and talk about what mm -hmm. our communities not only need, but also offer suggestions on how we think to best address the problems and the issues. We are strong advocates in a lot of the organizations that influence housing and housing issues on a national and a state level and definitely mm -hmm. a local level mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. so. so for example, at CDAC, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so what's CDAC all about? Mm -hmm. And as, as a person with a lot mm -hmm. of experience with our clients mm -hmm. and other life experiences, okay. yes. um, uh, what are some of the changes you've been able to make? So what's CDAC? CDAC is Sussex County Economic Development Action Committee. Long name, yes. um, powerful, just like ours, you know, mm -hmm. in that uh, CDAC looks at the economy of the community. Mm -hmm. We look at the employers that are coming in and the jobs that they offer and the wages that they offer and mm -hmm. how they're going to impact mm -hmm. our community. Uh, where they should be located in the mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. because with Sussex County, of course, we're, we're looking at East versus West mm -hmm. Sussex and opportunities on one side versus the other. Mm -hmm. So CDAC looks at the community as a whole and then we say, okay, we make our suggestions to the county, of course, as to the course of action that's going to best impact the local community mm -hmm. for jobs, for wages. Mm -hmm. uh, we are now working with the school districts. Uh, one of the things we realized is that a lot of the larger companies that were coming to Delaware were actually bringing uh, staffing from outside of the state to Delaware. 
because they were saying that our children were not uh, qualified for the positions. Mm -hmm. And so they were bringing in talent. And so mm -hmm. then we had to readdress the schools mm -hmm. and figure out why aren't our locals being trained? Mm -hmm. Why aren't there training programs? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where we are now with CDAC is working with the county and working with vendors and businesses um, and the school districts in trying to address those issues of qualifying our local community for those high paying jobs. So would it be accurate for me to say that if we are not at the table bringing our th outside the box thinking mm -hmm. uh, to a group of folk making decisions on our behalf, mm -hmm. that our new one, our needs mm -hmm. won't be considered and a new way of addressing an issue mm -hmm. would not ever been thought of. I think that's definitely a fair assumption because unless you have experienced it, it's hard for you to determine and make a decision based on something you haven't experienced. Mm -hmm. You won't know that uh, a McDonald's job as a manager only pays me $11 an hour and at $11 an hour, whether I'm working 60 hours a week, I still don't make enough to afford housing. Mm -hmm. Uh, in east or west side mm -hmm. you won't know that mm -hmm. if that's not your experience and so for us to be able as advocates to bring those voices to the table to bring those stories to the table of our clients it begins to create an awakening is what I like to call it mm -hmm. an awakening of the reality of our communities and what the landscape really looks like so folk our, our audience today if they want to participate if they want to uh, have their voices heard, mm -hmm. uh, what is it that is required of them mm -hmm. to be able to be at the table? Mm -hmm. Any advice you can give? Absolutely. I always say showing up is half the battle. Um, most of us are not showing up. The county council meetings where local legislation happens that talks about, you know, our, our school systems and our wages and and the jobs coming in, mm -hmm. they hold public forums. Mm -hmm. That's where your voice can be heard. Public comments that are made at those meetings are looked at, are listened to. You have a chance to put a, a face to the voice and to the plight. Mm -hmm. uh, make public comments online. Uh, all of our meetings with CDAC are open to the public. So when these meetings are open, you have a chance to come in and tell your story. Mm -hmm. You have a chance to come in and say, look, I'm living this, this is my reality, mm -hmm. and I need help. Mm -hmm. And you are the one that can help me. And I think making it real um, mm -hmm. is the only way we are going to change it. Being able to be transparent mm -hmm. about the lives we live is the only way we're going to be able to affect change. And that is so true, where when you said, uh, showing up as half yes. the battle, mm -hmm. but uh, to in order to show up, you need to know what's going on. Right. And we certainly don't have the best outlets to yes. inform, notify our neighbors, our right. community about right. what's going on. Some great stuff happens, mm -hmm. and we learn about it the day after, after. Yes. not the day before, so right. we could participate and become part of it. Right. So I think that communication piece is missing. Yes. Um, so we have to be uh, even more vigilant mm -hmm. to find out what's mm -hmm. going on and be there. Absolutely. So the storytelling, mm -hmm. uh, how much of an impact does it make if I came to a public hearing mm -hmm. and shared my personal experience? Mm -hmm. Is it going to really move people mm -hmm. at all? I think yes, uh, and I say yes from experience. I think one of the most important things that I can say that I within this last, I would say, six months to a year was to be transparent about my own story mm -hmm. before county council. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, county council may think that life is one way mm -hmm. because they've never met Lillian. Mm -hmm. And what they didn't know even when they met her was that she was a single mother and that at one point she was on welfare mm -hmm. trying to raise two small children. Mm -hmm. She had a decent education, worked to try to get a job, was homeless, sleeping behind Delaware National Bank. They may not ever remember that, uh, you know, that she showed up or she was the president of Sussex Housing Group or anything like that. 
but they remember the story. Mm -hmm. It's hard to hear a story sometimes about certain things mm -hmm. and not feel impacted by the story. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that a lot of us are uh, unable to be transparent mm -hmm. for whatever the reasons are. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's pride, maybe it's whatever. Mm -hmm. If my sharing my story about my living conditions at one point in my life in the county that you were making decisions for mm -hmm. is going to impact you and you are going to think about me the next time you cast a vote for a job mm -hmm. that pays more or for housing that's affordable at a certain level, mm -hmm. uh, then I will share my story all day. And mm -hmm. I think the more stories that they hear, mm -hmm. the more they understand that mm -hmm. it's not a singular issue at all, mm -hmm. that there are a lot of people in the county who are living beneath the poverty level. Right. And living beneath the poverty level has such mm -hmm. huge impacts on everything right absolutely i mean even if, if you worked two jobs mm -hmm. three jobs and uh, your rent mm -hmm. you can barely make it right um food you can barely put on the table medical expenses medical expenses child care yes um it, it's truly uh, it does difficult. it affects it all and there's you know there's no way to say that affordable housing is great and you make affordable housing and not think about transportation and then do transportation and not think about child care and all those other things mm -hmm. that go into it so you're absolutely right but aren't we all siloed aren't, uh, that that's yes. what we think okay ah, i'm a housing person yes you know don't talk to me about taxes right don't absolutely. talk to me about banking absolutely don't talk to me about credit absolutely you have a housing problem right you can fix it you can't fix it. Right. You can't fix it. Go here. Right. Fix it. All right. I'm here. Absolutely. So what is special about us? <laughs> What's special about us is, is we're not that way. We're not siloed. We realize that everything we do touches and affects something else. Mm -hmm. We share clients, and we share clients in that the tax client that came in and is working with our tax clinic director has a housing issue as well because if his has a tax lien then that lien is on his property mm -hmm. and so then he has to see the housing counselor and if he has any other title issues that are rolled in that we have to get everyone involved mm -hmm. we certainly realize that DCRC and I think that's one of the reasons that I love who we are and I, you hear me talk a lot about our culture uh, and because what I think about is that we are so inclusive we realize that people are coming for not just one thing and that it does take a village it takes a village to raise a village mm -hmm. not just a child it takes a village to raise a village and we bring our clients into that culture mm -hmm. and we look to help change okay you have a transportation issue we're not going to leave you because you have a transportation mm -hmm. issue we're going to try to help you figure out how you get your transportation mm -hmm. issue solved mm -hmm. um, social security you have an income issue no problem we have referrals and we seek partnerships partnerships not only within our organization but partnerships outside of our organization mm -hmm. for the benefit of our clients mm -hmm. that make it work mm -hmm. because we we're individuals I love that all of my colleagues um, we're so transparent with one another that we realize and it just extends to all of our clientele that we are the same way mm -hmm. in that uh, come on into the fold what's the problem okay none of our clinics run that problem or help that problem but you know I think I know someone let me refer you to someone mm -hmm. and we never leave them I think we've said that so much to so many clients that they now say it back to us mm -hmm. it was like we're gonna call you because even if you don't do what we do or what need we know that you have the answer uh -huh. and they found that in us as an organization mm -hmm. so uh, yes uh, every opportunity you get yes. you talk about how fiercely protective you yes. are of this amazing culture, which has amazing diversity. Yes. We, we are a very diverse yes. group of staff. Yes. Um, I never think of ourselves as staff. I think of us as a family. Yes. And we, are, we, we have Latinas, we have um, um, Asian, African American, yeah. Caucasian. Um, a mixed we, bag. <laughs> we have mixed viewpoints. Yes, we do. Um, which allows mm -hmm. us that something that, as I was growing up, my mother used to say, never ever think you know everything, right. honey. Right. You've got to sit with somebody right. and listen because they are yes. the ones that are seeing what's behind you. Yes. Uh, you know. Yes. So, so broaden your perspective. We yes. have amazing viewpoints. Yes. And we aren't when we sit down. Uh, once every now and again mm -hmm. at staff mm -hmm. meetings to discuss. We mm -hmm. don't discuss 
uh, problem, like right, the right. individual issue, right. individual right. client. We look at solutions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how can we think of? Yeah. How can we make it a little more mm -hmm. easier for right. everyone? And that's it. I love working mm -hmm. with Christian. Christian, work. Uh, Christian, our outreach coordinator, of course, in Sussex, and um, it has opened up a whole different viewpoint for me with the Latino community and the the things that they go through. Mm -hmm. uh, this scare with immigration and mm -hmm. how that affected them with housing, how that affected our services to them mm -hmm. was amazing. Yes. We, we had to go above and beyond and thank God for Jacqueline working with uh, the immigration paperwork for some mm -hmm. of our clients and mm -hmm. just trying to be there. Mm -hmm. But the fear, I yes. think, was something that hit home to me mm -hmm. is that they were even afraid to come to the office because of what may or may not happen mm -hmm. uh, at our offices. Mm -hmm. And so we begin to go out to the clients. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can't come to us, we're but gonna come to you. But you've always done that. We have, right, we sir. have. But I think just understanding mm -hmm. the fear from that community right. and being able to do that, because I don't believe that every organization would have allowed us to be mm -hmm. able to be so versatile, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to, okay, meet the client where they are. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes. we do. Mm -hmm. So an another thing I know you're pushing me very, very hard, and that <laughs> is, guys, you have, you're doing everything in Wilmington, which is great. Yes. When will you expand to, to Sussex. Sussex? And yes. one of them is our credit union. Yes. And uh, tell me what about our credit union fascinates you, mm -hmm. what potential it has, mm -hmm. and why should it be in Sussex as well? It should be in Sussex because it's wonderful. Because first of all, it's the community credit union. And, and to say that doesn't even sound right. It's the community's credit union. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard enough uh, to, um, okay, so first I have to confess. I have to confess out loud that at one point in my life, I was the manager for a payday lending company. So I know, right? So, but what I realized being the manager for a payday lending company was that everybody that was coming there wasn't coming just because they were bad with money or anything like that. They were coming because they had to make a choice between uh, do I get my medicine and do I eat? Mm -hmm. Or do I pay my rent uh, and so I can afford my medicine some mm -hmm. other way? Mm -hmm. uh, what the credit union is able to do is to one, do away with those crazy fees. And yes, we did charge really crazy fees. and I. I get it, yes, it really was 300 plus percent. Mm -hmm. The credit union has more flexibility to be able to help people. They're not paying crazy mm -hmm. fees. But beyond that, what I love about Stepping Stones is that with Stepping Stones comes all of the counseling. Mm -hmm. It comes the hand-holding when there needs it. It comes the honesty about, let's sit down, take a look at your budget, mm -hmm. and let's see what, how we could really help you. Because if this doesn't help you, mm -hmm. then we don't want to just give it to you exactly. at all. Yes, because we, we don't want you worse right. off exactly. because of us, you know? Exactly. <laughs> yes. There aren't other organizations that are going to do that, mm -hmm. but the Stepping Stones is going to do that. I know that because we're the ones who do it. Mm -hmm. And so I think that it's great that it's in Wilmington and that more people, I'm always telling more people, should be involved in it and should be members. It's so crucial. If I need a, a utility loan or a micro loan or I'm trying to get on my feet and the only thing that's keeping me from getting on my feet is transportation mm -hmm. and I can find a buy here pay here we're gonna help people with the buy here pay here we're gonna look at the terms of it mm -hmm. the credit union is gonna do all that for them and it's such a comfortable atmosphere mm -hmm. that they feel like they can sit down and Maticela is gonna sit down and talk with them mm -hmm. we are literally gonna look at their budget you're gonna refer them to a counselor if they need more help with mm -hmm. something we're gonna look at every aspect of their life and make sure that it's good for them mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, as an example, very recently we had a member that had applied for yes. a uh, really foreclosure prevention right. loan, right. Uh, and we were going to mm -hmm. do the foreclosure prevention mm -hmm. loan. Mm -hmm. However, we knew right. that there was a better way right. for her, and right. the better way was for her to meet with you right. and uh, to figure out if the lender could work other solutions, right. Right. and in addition, work with Joe to get right. a, a handle on budget right, right. because, you know, uh, uh, like showing up is half the battle yes. in advocacy. <laughs> yes. uh, showing up 
and learning about what's going on yes. with your money is right. half the battle with mm -hmm. managing money. Absolutely. So it's working with the two of you, mm -hmm. we are now going to look at her loan application again right. because foreclosure prevention isn't what she needs right. help with. Right? Absolutely, uh, absolutely. So we didn't want, I mean for a credit union, it would have made sense to right. make the loan and earn the d interest on that loan, right. but that wouldn't have helped. Right, it wouldn't have helped know? the client and right. that's what I think is so important about what Stepping Stones is able to do and what they're doing. So of course I want it in Sussex County yes. uh, and Kent County, I haven't forgotten you either, mm. but we definitely want it downstate because that's what people are needing. You know, money doesn't solve every issue and we completely understand that. Mm. And I know that Maticel and that you guys understand money doesn't solve every issue, mm. but together there is a solution. And mm. if I have developed patterns and habits that have caused me to be in a financial position that is not good for me, the fact that I can come one place, not only can you help me sit down and look at my personal expenses, my budget, and help me figure it out, I can apply to become a member, and if money will help me get to my long-term solution, mm -hmm. Stepping Stones is able to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I never lose the support. Mm -hmm. It's great that we offer services, and this is with all of our clinics, mm -hmm. we, we definitely offer the services. But beyond the service, we offer the support, mm -hmm. and that never changes. Mm -hmm. So you talked about payday lending. Now, <laughs> yes. uh, no, I mean, uh, yes. uh, you are now the expert here. Uh, <laughs> my expertise in this is from the advocacy perspective okay. because I see clients right. that get into the cycle of debt yes. out of which it is not easy to emerge. I mean, mm -hmm. just the math, simple math simply doesn't yes. work. Um, so we've advocated for a long while. Mm -hmm. uh, what can we do? Because nationally, this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, we had an awesome mm -hmm. bureau that was se set up to protect consumers from financial harm, yes. the Consumer Financial Protection yes. Bureau. Yes. Today, we can call it the Payday Protection Bureau because it joins forces with payday lenders to ask the court to Mm -hmm. You know, basically give the payday lenders free, free range. reign to yep. do whatever damage it wants to. Mm -hmm. It's told basically lenders, auto lenders, mm -hmm. auto lenders, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Lillian is black, she should get a higher interest yes. rate loan. Um, somebody here is mm -hmm. not black. So, or uh, white, right. so he should get a, a lower interest, interest right. loan. And Congress said, yep, it's mm -hmm. okay. So, mm -hmm. In this reality, and I get angry mm -hmm. as you can. <laughs> we call it passionate. <laughs> what can we do? Will mm -hmm. our stories uh, mm -hmm. coming forward and speaking about mm -hmm. the harms mm -hmm. of all of this? Mm -hmm. How, I mean, you've shared your story mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. uh, transparently mm -hmm. that you were in financial tough mm -hmm. positions Absolutely. and uh, nobody but a payday lender would have done business with you Absolutely. and I, w I think you might have had to borrow from a payday oh, lender. Absolutely. So what is it absolutely. that, uh, what kind of storytelling could actually move our elected officials mm -hmm. to protect their constituencies mm -hmm. from the real harm and it's not made up harm. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, I almost wish it were. Um, made up, you mean? I do. You I, almost I do. Wish I wish it that it were made up, that somewhere along the line we could really say that it couldn't possibly be that bad, mm -hmm. that people have to come. Now having been on a lot of different sides of uh, the financial industry, um, I've been a loan officer, I've been all these other things. One of the worst things I think that uh, I saw as a payday lending manager that caused me, because I still have a heart, was the choices of, of our seniors, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, they're not going to be eligible to go into a bank and get a loan for mm -hmm. any amount. Mm -hmm. They're on a fixed income. They're, they're everything you really shouldn't be mm -hmm. as far as uh, anyone that looked at financial stability. Mm -hmm. And they really have to make choices. Single mothers, they have to make choices. Mm -hmm. Do I pay my, my rent? 
in my house that I already can't afford. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I do, that takes almost all of my money because they make about seven ninety in Social Security and rent's probably going to be between five and six mm -hmm. that and I still have to pay utilities. I now have no food in the house. Mm -hmm. The food I'm going to eat is probably going to be pet food. And unfortunately, I would love to tell you that that's not the truth, but it is the truth for some of the, it was some of the, it was the truth for some of my clients then um, because it's cheap. Uh, thank God for the dollar store mm -hmm. and they can buy dollar food. Mm -hmm. um, but I think these stories, not just the stories, even faces. Mm -hmm. That's why I talk about transparency. These stories, I think the legislatures mm -hmm. need to hear mm -hmm. to understand yes. the, the complete reality mm -hmm. of the damage a payday lending company mm -hmm. can do. Mm -hmm. Payday lenders are going to unfortunately use that same story though to say that we're the only, only ones, ones that are going to lend mm -hmm. to people who traditionally, mm -hmm. and I've heard them say it, traditionally you don't want. Mm -hmm. Mr. Banker, you're not going to lend mm -hmm. to the mother that has a four or five hundred credit score. You're going to look at her credit, you're going to look at all those things. Mm -hmm. You don't care that she's working a full-time job. Mm -hmm. You don't care. Mm -hmm. You don't care that uh, even though she makes very minimum wage, she's still been able to pay uh, her electric, albeit sometimes late, I'm going to look at those as a payday lending manager and say, you know, you've been, you've been late a few times, but within the last six months you've been, you know, holding it together and you haven't been over 30 times late, you haven't been three times 30 days late, I am going to give you the mm -hmm. money you now can't afford to pay me back. Mm -hmm. That's so, yes. you know, so while the stories are awful, mm -hmm. both sides are going to use it to make their case. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons I advocate so strongly about stepping stones as well. Mm -hmm. And that model, I think, it's the model. Because we have other credit unions, and I know that. Yeah. But no model like stepping stones that's going to lend to that mother mm -hmm. looking at alternative credit, looking mm -hmm. at all these other things mm -hmm. that says, okay, this is what we're going to do. You're going to be in counseling and meet with your counselor and do this. And at this point, we're going to lend and we're going to help you. And in the meantime, we're going to pull all these other resources to try to help you in this situation get through to this point. Yeah, and it's pulling all the other resources it that is. are shrinking every day. Yes. Because federal funding, state yes. funding um, has reduced. So mm -hmm. cash assistance mm -hmm. is diminishing Absolutely. cost of things all going up Absolutely. Um, economy is booming for the mm -hmm. rest of the world Absolutely. but it's doing nothing in our community we are kind of stuck and uh, how do we unstuck ourselves certainly mm -hmm. uh, we can be part of the solution by being mm -hmm. at the table yes speaking out mm -hmm. if nothing at least even if you, we cannot propose a solution mm -hmm. at least tell what how we are hurting right. you know right. we can't rely on somebody to do an analysis right. and write an editorial that might be picked up right you know even in the news media right. staff is shrinking yes. there are fewer and fewer journalists mm -hmm. that are covering issues that popular. impact us every day right. and we are never popular mm -mm. our causes our communities mm -mm. hurt and pain isn't right. ever popular it right. won't be on the front page of the news mm -mm. Uh, so so be part of tell our stories mm -hmm. tell us learn how to tell That's our right. stories right because there is a way yes. to make our stories heard yes right and there and there's every reason in the world for for me to be transparent. I, I get all the reasons to not be. I get mm -hmm. that people might talk about you and all this other stuff, but let them talk because that's really what we need. Mm -hmm. Because enough chatter, enough talk, maybe the right person will hear. Mm -hmm. Somebody's mm -hmm. gonna hear. We have to come mm -hmm. out in numbers. Those of us who are in advocacy, mm -hmm. we have to join forces. One of the funniest things was, is because I sit on CDAC's board and I sit on Sussex Housing Group's board, uh, I noticed that we were talking about similar issues, but we weren't talking together. Mm -hmm. We were showing up to county council, but we were showing up for two different workshops, mm -hmm. one for the economic development workshop, one for the housing workshop, and never the two shall meet uh, until I'm saying, you know, hey guys, to both, this isn't making any sense. Mm -hmm. We need to partner for impact. Mm -hmm. We will come and support the economic development agenda and mm -hmm. workforce because again, without good jobs, 
our people can't afford housing and then housing we said CDAC we're going to show up and talk about that because if our people have a place to stay that's near the job mm -hmm. then it's going to impact what you're doing and it's going to draw those employers there mm -hmm. so now we share boards and we mm -hmm. sit on each other's boards and we meet and we talk about the issues and how we can make a stronger impact on county council mm -hmm. so even those of us in advocacy need to look at who's doing similarly where we have synergy and we need to show up in force. Mm -hmm. That is so true. Mm -hmm. So now, recently, Jacqueline and I have been looking mm -hmm. at the foreclosure listings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, in the month of July, will it be, I think, 10th of July, mm -hmm. is a sheriff's sale in yes. Newcastle County. Yes. And uh, we found about 50 pages mm -hmm. of tax sales. Yes. So folk are losing yes. their homes yes. for not paying their tax property rate. taxes mm -hmm. or their water bills. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There are a few that are owners that probably are living in their homes. I mm -hmm. don't know. Mm -hmm. There are. There are some that are LLCs and mm -hmm. trusts and things like that. And some reverse mortgages. Mm -hmm. So, tell me mm -hmm. um, about property taxes. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about property taxes. Mm -hmm. So, I own my home. I've mm -hmm. been paying my mortgage for 30 years. Mm -hmm. I never had to deal with property taxes ever mm -hmm. because it was included right. in my mortgage. Right. Or homeowners insurance because right. I was paying in my mortgage. Right. I burnt my mortgage because it's paid off. Right. So. What's happening? What's happening? You're not yes. paying your taxes. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're not paying your taxes, doesn't matter whether you've paid that house off or not. Uh, if unfortunately you have a reverse mortgage and you're not paying your property taxes, whatever that is, that ta the, the county has a right to now put the lien on your property. And if they are not paid, and unfortunately what we're seeing is that they want them paid uh, they're offering some payment arrangements, but most of the time, by the time you get to the, pre the payment arrangement, the amount is more than a person can pay in a lump sum, and so they're ending up in share sale for taxes. So I could have bought a home 35 years ago for, say, ten, fifteen thousand mm dollars -hmm. $15,000. For 30 years, I paid my mortgage. Mm -hmm. uh, the house appreciated, depreciated, but today it is valued at about 100000 mm -hmm. My taxes are $8,000 that I haven't paid. Mm -hmm. I'm losing a $100,000 home for $8,000. Absolutely. Unfortunately, we recently had a client that we were fighting for similar. Uh, they were in the situation, though, because they pulled their mortgage, uh, they pulled their tax payment. They paid their own taxes and mm -hmm. insurance. Mm -hmm. And so we had a $100,000 house that we were about to lose for taxes mm. and so we had to figure out what to do and it was about four thousand mm. dollars so uh, he was able to uh, he was able to actually borrow some money and get the taxes paid up but yes absolutely you can have a situation where you have a hundred thousand dollar or two hundred thousand dollar house uh, and you have not paid four or five thousand dollars worth of taxes they are indeed going to put a lien on the property and they will sell it at sheriff sale and they don't want a payment plan at that particular point by the time anything hits sheriff sale it's lump sum or nothing so if i found myself in that situation where i owed some taxes mm -hmm. um, and i'm going into foreclosure mm -hmm. are you going to help me absolutely we're always going to help uh, there you know we have very limited programs as you spoke of earlier the cfpb um, and all that um, the shift that's happened recently there uh, we don't have the power I feel like they were our, kind of like our muscle at one point mm -hmm. and now we can't go to Department of Justice and or say we're going to talk to CFPB and they're going to give us some muscle yeah, to I give mean, us some time. We could save uh, ho foreclosures right. by saying filing a complaint with Ex CFPB right. and it used to Right. Give us time to work a exactly. solution for our clients. We don't we have that do time that anymore. Yeah. So, so now not having mm. that time, we've lost a little bit of an edge there. Mm. And so we literally have to jump on them. And we, there aren't programs really that uh, will offer financial assistance. 
And so if we can't get the mortgage company to agree mm -hmm. to work with us, mm -hmm. um, and if the client doesn't have the wherewithal, maybe they don't have a, a, a brother or sister or whatever or a family member who can lend them the money or mm -hmm. extend the money to them, they're not able to go to the bank and most of the time they don't have the credit to go to a bank mm -hmm. to do that. Uh, we are we are finding ourselves unfortunately having to go whatever lengths to help them mm, I know and we have gone to a lot of lengths yes, to help them everything from bankruptcy to mm -hmm. to you know saying look this is what we're able to do uh, will you take it we're going to appeal it appeal it appeal it appeal it appeal it mm -hmm. until someone listens and uh, by grace we've been successful but it shouldn't have to be that much of a fight the bank but should it's going be to be a to. fight and it's getting harder and harder it is harder yes. so so uh, usually uh, cities municipalities uh, counties mm -hmm. have the ability to yes um, foreclose on your home for yes. non-payment of your property taxes right. or water bills, payment plan etc <laughs> Now, I know that most of these jurisdictions do communicate with the homeowner mm -hmm. and let them know, pick up the phone, yes. call, pick up the phone, call. Now, how difficult is it to yeah. pick up the phone and call? Would, let me put it this way. You found yourself in this situation, mm -hmm. say, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Would you have picked up the phone and called for help or you would have said, no, they are not going to help me, I know it, and give up already. I would not have called. <laughs> you wouldn't have. I, I, would I know. Have. So many people don't call. I Why? Why? Because of I knew they weren't going to help me. One, mm. I don't have any money. You're going to ask me for something I don't have. You're going to ask me to put a chunk down. You're going to ask me to make arrangements for an amount that I really can't afford. I'm doing the best that I can. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't want to be on the phone with you for you to just tell me there's nothing that you can do to help me. Uh, and there's nowhere that you can refer me to. And so I'm going to lose either way. Mm -hmm. uh, and so my thing is, is that until I can do differently or until I have something I can call you with and even try, mm -hmm. I'm probably not going to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Uh, and unfortunately, there is, you know, such a stigma about the other people, the person on the other end of the phone, mm -hmm. that, you know, they're not going to help me anyway. They're not even trying to help me. They don't want to help me. Mm -hmm. Most of our clients think that mortgage companies are trying to take their houses. And so the lack of communication mm -hmm. uh, is a huge problem with uh, some of the issues that by the time they get to us so late. So they get by the time they come to us, they already have been years not months, years, mm -hmm. where they've not picked up the phone, they've not spoken to anyone, um, and by the time they get to us, we're, right. we have no time. How do we uh, help our communities, uh, you know, separate the scam mm -hmm. from real help? Mm -hmm. Because of course, our people get scammed left, right, and center yes. out of everything yes. that they've worked so hard yes. to accumulate. Yes. And in a mm -hmm. matter of a, like a blink of an eye, yes. it's all gone. So what, what kind of things should we work on to mm -hmm. make sure that we know our community, our community knows us? Mm -hmm. And like I always say, trust us, but trust nobody, right. not even us, right. do your due diligence. Right. Right. So how, what can education. we do? Education, you know, the funny thing is, is while I believe that education is key for our communities about the resources that are available, not just our own, but all of the resources that are available to them, uh, all of the scams that are out there. The one thing that almost every nonprofit doesn't have is a marketing budget. Mm -hmm. And so uh, AARP put on that wonderful, mm -hmm. uh, that wonderful conference where they had a whole segment dedicated to fraud. Um, there were a good amount of people in the room, mm -hmm. but not nearly half as many as should have been. Mm -hmm. And some of the frauds and some of the scams that are out there were just incredible. I was even just I like, know. oh my gosh, are you kidding? Mm -hmm. um, and so education is key for our communities, but then it's like, how do you get it out? We have to get it to where they are. Um, and we're busy working our cases, and I understand this, and I say this for not just our organization, for all the other organizations too. 
I know we're working our cases, we're doing what we can, we only have so many hours in the day, but we have to go out into the community. Mm -hmm. We can't sit in our office and, and just address everyone that comes to us, no matter mm -hmm. how many it is or whatever. We have to go to community events, we have to go to churches, we have to pass out information, we have to just be able to get it out to wherever they are, whether it's daycares, about, you know, the send stuff home to their parents, about frauds that are going on in that area, mm -hmm. to our senior centers, we should be going to senior centers and talking about, you know, the scams and frauds that are happening amongst our seniors. I know it's tough, you know, I know that even, even as I say that, I know that's something that most people say, okay, look, nobody has that much time mm -hmm. in a day, and I do understand, yes. but I think without that education, we're just going to continue to see so, Lillian, what we have. So, Lillian, you've taken on so much <laughs> on your own self. I mean, I ask, how is it that you accomplish all of this? You do, uh, I, I suspect you live on two to three hours of sleep because about, you yeah. are working. <laughs> I know you're so passionate about small businesses yes. and you help small businesses yes. uh, get their act together. Yes. Uh, I know you're passionate about um, uh, folk that um, may not be able to be employed uh, yeah. for some reason and you've come up with brilliant ways yeah. to help them uh, become, I mean, uh, get Mm -hmm. Dignity, yes. you know, dignity of labor. Yes. You've done many, 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 many things. Yes. You have your ministry. Yes. You have um, so much going on. One, why do you do so much? Why? Because I've been there. I've been on the other side of everything. I've mm -hmm. been homeless. I've been unemployed. I've been the single parent with two small children, with unable to afford daycare, and with no help and. Uh, with no one trying to help me. I've been to ministries where we've asked for help and no one was able to help me. Mm -hmm. um, and not that I think I can solve all of the ills and problems of the world, mm -hmm. but whatever I can do, I feel like I should do. Mm -hmm. And I feel like God has blessed me with a lot of knowledge and resources mm -hmm. and connections and he's given me the ability to be able to talk and speak in a heart of compassion. Mm -hmm. And so I know what it's like you know, I've never, been, I've never been an offender, but I understand as an offender when you come out and people are trying to tell you that you, you can't get a job here, you can't stand on your own, we're not going to employ you, and then they send you right back. Mm -hmm. So we talk about recidivism as if it's not our problem. Mm -hmm. It is, because we wouldn't hire them. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't give them a job that made sustainable income. Mm -hmm the single mother that's working the job and the half, we're not gonna help her fix her credit because fixing her credit would allow her to get a car to get a better job mm -hmm. or school. We're not gonna help them get into school because we figure you can't afford it anyway and they're so busy working, who has time for school? Mm -hmm. So I do all, you know, the ministry is important. The, the Elevated Ministries allows me to, to I think, go to ministries, pastors and churches and leaders of congregations if I help you understand how to get it, then you affect your congregation. Your congregation will affect your community. So it's about numbers now for me. It's about affecting large groups so that we can help more people um, better. And there's such a diverse, um, there's so many needs. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you look, you're not gonna walk into the grocery store and not see people that need, that mm -hmm. don't need something. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we can help. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. So for uh, one of the things that you started, which was very exciting uh, for uh, the Flagger Certification Program. Yes. Um, and it's because our credit clinic. Yes. As a credit clinic, mm -hmm. we go and we yes. tell everyone, manage your money. That's well. right. But mm -hmm. then when the question was asked, what money? Right. <laughs> How do I get the money? Right. Um, right. You could have said, I have no clue. No. You know, that's your problem, right. not mine. Right. And you sat, thought, mm -hmm. uh, did a lot of research, mm -hmm. found amazing partners, mm -hmm. and brought everything together. Mm -hmm. And w with the certification program, mm -hmm. there's still a need after that. Mm -hmm. Because tell me about this need, yeah. both from getting the certification mm -hmm. and uh, what kind of money 
somebody needs to right. get the job. Well, in order for the, the certification is great. One, being able to come out of, and I developed that program specifically because of the uh, inability of ex-offenders to be hired at right. jobs that paid sustainable wages, mm -hmm. yet we don't want them to go back out doing the things that they were doing before. Mm -hmm. As a flagger, the ex-offender, the, the offense is not a primary reason for you not to get a job. Right. In fact, it's probably the perfect job for mm. you. Not only that, it pays sustainable wages. However, the problem then became, how do we get them through the class? It is a certification. Obviously, right. State of Delaware offers it. You have to be able to pay for it. Mm. They don't have a job. Yes. They don't come out and mm. hand you a check right. to pay for the certification. The certification is going to allow you to become sustainable. Mm -hmm. So the wonderful partner, Stepping Stones, again, this is why we need Stepping Stones in Sussex County, too. Uh, Stepping Stones stepped up as a partner, which was so amazing, and offered peer lending, micro lending, for our uh, participants in the Wilmington area to be able to pay for not only their certification, but also for their uniforms. Mm -hmm. Because as a flagger, yes, they're going to hire you, and they're not asking a lot of questions, but you have to come prepared. Yeah. You have to have yeah, your safety uniform. Shoes, yeah, you have uh, to have your, your stop slow paddle. Your, you have to come mm -hmm. ready to work. Mm -hmm. And that's understandable. Mm -hmm. That's understandable. I didn't want to make it a burden on the employer. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful you're hiring my guys, my, my, pe my participants. So we looked for some way to be able to assist the participants to be able to get that. I am so grateful that Stepping Stone stepped up in Sussex, mm -hmm. in Kent County, in Wilmington. Uh -huh. to be well, so, so you want, want me all over. I do, right. I do. <laughs> um, stepped up in Wilmington mm -hmm. to be able to offer that mm -hmm. because it made such a huge difference mm -hmm. because then they don't have that barrier. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, too, is what I talked about earlier is that by being a member of Stepping Stones, I know that not only are they going to get the assistance they need to get their certification, yeah. they're also going to get the support, yes. which for that particular group, of clientele is so important mm -hmm. uh, and they know it's important mm -hmm. and they enjoy, they enjoy the fact that when they come to Stepping Stones they're people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. So you started out when we talked about our culture. So yeah. yes, our culture is yeah. incredibly something that I'm very, very proud yes. of. It's uh, uh, for all of us we mm -hmm. share we, we do what we do mm -hmm. at DCRAC and Stepping Stones, mm -hmm. not because the pay is great, <laughs> but we, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. feel incredibly valued. Yes. Valued by our colleagues, yes. valued by our clients, mm -hmm. valued mm -hmm. by our partners. Absolutely. I mean, it feels mm -hmm. really good mm -hmm. to be so overwhelmed with work yes. because your partners are referring clients mm -hmm. to you. Absolutely. Knowing you'll take care of them. That's it. So that's, that's, it. Uh, that's, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So we kind of talked about many things. Uh, primarily, it was mm -hmm. housing, a little bit of taxes thrown mm -hmm. in there, a right. little bit of credit thrown in there, credit mm -hmm. union, yes. quite a bit. Yes. Um, I want to go back to the credit union piece. Mm -hmm. Certainly, we have small loans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things, as we were doing the, um, we, we looked at the foreclosure mm -hmm. list for July 10th, yes. and what Jacqueline has done is sent to individuals on mm -hmm. that list Mm -hmm. a letter. Mm -hmm. So by the way, if you are an individual that mm -hmm. received a letter from DCRAC, mm -hmm. open that envelope. All it says is, give us a call, talk mm -hmm. to us. It's so late in the game, we possibly aren't going to be able to do anything, but at mm -hmm. least we can talk to you. Right. But in this, mm -hmm. another list that we are kind of mm -hmm. keeping an eye on mm -hmm. is this project rightful owner. Mm -hmm. So if you are a homeowner that mm -hmm. lost your home in a foreclosure, mm -hmm. say the home was worth 100,000, mm -hmm. it foreclosed for 80,000, mm -hmm. there is $20,000 sitting in your name right. with the courts. That you don't know that of. That you don't know of. Right. And we are t really investing in mm -hmm. finding where you are currently mm -hmm. because we know where you were mm -hmm. previously. So mm -hmm. in the context of scams, etc., I understand. Right.
but please, I've been coming to you since 1999. And like I've always said, my message hasn't changed. We are here, we are mm -hmm. in the community. I want to see us on the front page of the News Journal for doing good stuff, not for doing anything bad. Mm -hmm. So come to us if, if, if there's anything we can do. Maybe yeah. we can help you, mm -hmm. maybe we can't. But it is something mm -hmm. that we will learn about. Absolutely. And then we can bring it to those who mm -hmm. need to know and maybe mm -hmm. make change happen. Absolutely. And with foreclosure, some of the homes are going into foreclosure for under 5,000. Yes. And if they are under 5,000 in the city of Wilmington, mm -hmm. then one more reason for you to become a member mm -hmm. of Stepping Stones mm -hmm. because you can apply for a $5,000 loan mm -hmm. and uh, prevent losing mm -hmm. roof over your head. Absolutely. So there's so much that we have to offer. Absolutely. I really am so incredibly thankful, uh, Lillian, that you're here today on a Thank Sunday you. just before you're planning a tiny staycation. Yes. High yes. time. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I hope uh, traffic going back isn't too bad. Yeah, it shouldn't be going south. It shouldn't be too bad. Yeah. So what else? We have just a few minutes and mm -hmm. uh, anything you would like to tell those that are watching um, on what, how they can help us help our communities. You said mm -hmm. it takes a village to help it's, a village. Yeah, it takes you know? a village to raise a village. Mm -hmm. I think just reach out. I mean, you were saying it best that we may or may not be able to. My bet is that we'll be able to somehow. But just reach out, call us. I know that there are so many things going on and it's hard to know who to trust. Mm -hmm. And we're not making any promises. Mm -hmm. We're not making unreasonable demands on anyone. We're saying, let me see if I can help you. Mm -hmm. How can I help you? Mm -hmm. How can I serve you? Mm -hmm. That's all. Mm -hmm. So we just need them to reach out. If you get to us, somehow we're gonna figure it out. Mm -hmm. And if we take a long time or whatever, it doesn't matter because the point is we're never gonna leave you. Mm -hmm. We're gonna stay right with you till the end of whatever it is. Uh, and we're going to work through it with you. Mm -hmm. So Lillian Harrison, mm -hmm. our housing director, can be reached at 298-3289. I know that number by heart <laughs> because I get about four or five phone calls every day and I tell them, call Lillian. So with that, my time is up. Happy 4th of July and let's meet again next month. Bye-bye. Jacqueline Quinn, Deputy Director at DCRAC. I'm here to help you with your housing, tax, or title problem. So give me a call anytime, and I'm happy to meet to see what we can do together. My name is Joe Gross. I'm the Credit Clinic Director here at DCRAC. I'm the one that would sit down with you, develop a budget, figure out a spending plan, pull your credit report, and see if there's any way we can improve that. Hi, my name is Lillian Harrison, and I'm the Housing Director for DCRAC. And as the Housing Director, I help people with foreclosure prevention, pre-purchase counseling, credit, and budgeting. And it's absolutely my pleasure to serve you. Hi, my name is Anthony Doring. I'm Delaware's free tax attorney and the director at the DCRAC Low Income Tax Clinic. If you receive a notice from the IRS, please give me a call as soon as possible so I can schedule for a free consultation. Hi, my name is Maricela Tovar Rangel, and I am responsible for doing the intake process here at DCRAC. And I also manage the credit union, Stepping Stones Community Federal Credit Union, y también hablo español. Hi, my name is Christian Tijerino. I work for DICRA as a outreach director. I enjoy working for community and local families. Hi, my name is Howard Keener. I'm the director of strategic projects and community affairs for DCRAC. I work on human resources, internal policies and procedures, and community development, and also marketing for DCRAC. Mm -hmm.